with ZEW economic sentiment data released earlier today for both Germany and the Euro area as a whole. We're taking a closer look by talking to senior Eurozone economist at Oxford Economics, Ben May. So Ben, the German ZEW economic sentiment data showed a somewhat unexpected fall from the previous month to 553 the positive momentum earlier in the year stalled, heading into the second quarter for Europe's biggest economy. But how do you assess Germany's economic health overall? At face value, perhaps the fall in the, in, in the forward-looking indicator is, is a little bit disappointing. But really, the, the decline was small uh, and, and, and it, it was still at a very high level um, in absolute terms. So I'm not sure there's reason to be too disappointed by that. And it's also worth bearing in mind that the current conditions index um, rose substantially. So despite that, people are still very optimistic that things are going to get better over the next six months. So in that sense, I think it's a, it's a reasonably upbeat report. But certainly more generally, um, the German indicators have recently been very strong and suggest that we're going to see a, a, another very robust quarter of growth um, in, in Q1 for Germany. Um, and obviously that, that further rise in sentiment perhaps provides hope that, that that will stretch into Q2. The Eurozone's numbers have improved lately, albeit modestly, and the Euro ZEW Economic Sentiment Index has shown a rise to 64.8 today. But is this continued growth a demonstration of long-term sustainability for the Euro area? Well, I think certainly, once again, it's undoubtedly been the case that the, that the Eurozone has made a strong start to the year more generally. Um, a, a lot of the economic data has been strong. There's certainly um, real scope for, for quite a big upside surprise, I think, to uh, Eurozone GDP in, in, in Q1. Um, certainly, I think the fact that, that investor sent sentiment continues to rise is an encouraging sign that, that people aren't too phased by... Um, uh, the renewed fears about uh, about Greece and its future in the eurozone um, so so that 's certainly encouraging um, it 's possible that that perhaps that, that those fears could have a bit more of a damaging impact on 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 the real economy it might might encourage firms and and households to tread a little bit more cautiously um, but I think it 's important to remember that that actually there 's been some real signs of, of domestic healing taking place. Um, over, over recent quarters, um, things like employment are expanding. Um, nominal wage growth has been fairly flat, but, but obviously in real terms it's been rising quite sharply thanks to low oil prices. And we, we see that th th those positives um, will, 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 will support uh, growth over the coming quarters, and, and, and we think that, that, that certainly um, a, a more sustained period of, of, of more robust growth relative to what we were used to last year seems likely. Lastly for today, which indicators will you be keeping a close eye on that have the potential to shape the Eurozone's outlook? Well, I think um, certainly it's, it's very likely that, that household spending was a key driver of growth in, in, in Q1. Um, we've seen very strong retail sales and uh, consumer confidence has, has continued to strengthen as well. Um, so, so those will obviously be that those kinds of in indicators will be of interest. Um, encouragingly, um, we know that the household savings rate has, if anything, been increasing slightly in, in in the eurozone in the last part of last year. So it suggests that there's there's still plenty of scope for for spending to rise, e even if um, even if real income growth slows a bit as as, as inflation picks up. So I think those are going to be the really key key things to look at. Um, but another issue will obviously be what, what, what's happening in the banking sector. Are banks going to become increasingly willing to lend? Could, could we see perhaps um, some credit-driven dri growth um, that, that could be, say, supported for investment? So, so a closer look at what's happening to bank lending and, and, and banks' willingness to lend um, using the sort of ECB bank lending service as a proxy. Uh, I think all those kinds of things will, 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 be, will be important too over the next few months. Thank you, Ben. Check back with Duke Scopy for more updates throughout the week. Goodbye for now.